hey, I just wanted to say a few things today. And this is just my thoughts, you know. Am I surprised about the coronavirus? No, I'm not. No, I'm not. I'm not surprised about the coronavirus at all. Am I surprised at the intrigue behind it? The things that China is doing while people were dropping dead? Both countries telling lies about how many people have died. The United States and China telling lies. They don't want to tell the exact number of people who are dead. Am I surprised about the way the world has even been able to handle this virus? Everybody's taken on our ways. World economies have been destroyed. Am I surprised about it? Am I surprised about how Nigerians are responding and how other places are responding? No, I'm not surprised about anything. Some people have an indicator in them. Some people don't. I have that thermometer in which I feel that the society was going in a direction that was so dark, so dark, that at some point, God had to intervene. Look, we're back in biblical times. This plague, this is a plague. Oh. This, yeah, people will say coronavirus. The world will say coronavirus, but this is a plague. And this plague is because of what human beings have become. What, how, you see, plagues in the Bible never came based on just, I want to plague you. <laughs> plagues always came in the Bible based on how human beings treated their fellow human beings. How people treat people. How people deal with people. God will stay from heaven and watch and say, you know what? The way I have seen how people deal with people. The way I've seen how people treat people. The way I've seen how people handle people. It's time for me to show people that I'm still God. I want to take an example though, of the kind of things I've observed over here in the United States of America. And when I want to talk about those things I've observed here, you know, I would just say this is what I have seen. This is what I have seen, you know? And from there, we'll be able to understand that I am not surprised. I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised at all. Men over here, you are married and you're a man over here. And you, you, you know, you're having children outside that nobody knows about. And you are sleeping with women all over the place, but you're married here. And the society somehow knows about you, but nobody says a word. And you're doing it all over the place and sleeping around. Even you sleep to the point that you destroy other people's marriages. I'm talking about the African community in the United States of America. You're a woman. A man brought you all the way from Nigeria to this country and was kind to you and loved you and made sure that you got settled and had papers. And the first thing you did was to scatter the marriage because you've heard how the law over here takes side with the women. You took his house, you took everything and made sure they slammed on him a child support bill of at least $100,000. And then you go around lying to everybody about what truly happened. You lie everywhere you go. You lie to every single person. And then you go around, after that, you go and go to nurses and come and say, I'm a professional nurse, a professional medical. You, 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 you do think, in fact, in your, in your actions, there's no God. It's not only you day. Look, you're a man, you're having children all over the place and then you don't want to take care of them. Look, you're a woman. You scatter your marriage. Why? Because you want to become a lesbian by force. Look, you're a man. You scatter your marriage. Why? Because you want to become a homosexual by force. Look, you are somebody. You're going around bragging, bragging, bragging on Instagram, bragging on Facebook that you are so rich that you don't know where to keep money. But nobody knows what you do. Nobody. For the first time, I saw how a shower will come out and brag about money. I see how men come out and brag about money. I see how people come out and brag about money. I'm like, wow, where is the world going to? For the first time in my life, have I seen people that you, you see someone's marriage going down the drain. It, it's like it's like Sodom and Gomorrah. Instead of you to go and tell the person, this thing you're doing is not right. You tell, let the men go and meet the man and say, oh boy, calm. Let the women go and meet the woman. No, feminists jump in on one side, make the marriage scatter very quickly because it must be the man's fault. Everything is the man's fault. Women are perfect. And then the men on this other side are rushing. Ah, well, well, boy, leave the... Human, there's no sanctity of marriage. There's no sanctity of human life. There's no sanctity of every, anything. People will do very, very egregious things to each other and stand strong in it. I am not surprised about this coronavirus. 
I am not surprised one bit on what has happened. And God has proven himself in this one. It doesn't matter if you're a medical doctor. It doesn't matter if you're an engineer. It doesn't matter if you're a lawyer. It doesn't matter how much money you have. Right now, a little virus has shown you that you're nothing. A little virus has shown the world that people, where is all the money? Where is all your show? You want to show that you're something. That house, you can die and leave that house. You can die and leave that car. You can die and leave the clothes on your body. You can die and leave the lawyer that is helping you to destroy another man or the lawyer that is helping you to destroy another African woman with lies that you've told them. You're not telling them the truth that there's something wrong with you, that you, as you're sitting here, you want to change things in a way that is not of God. You are lying. You're just trying to take advantage of things because you're in a country where you can do whatever you like. You can say whatever you like to people. You're lying. And now, where is that lawyer? Why don't you go and visit that lawyer in his office now during the time of coronavirus? Why don't you go and visit the, 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 the your boyfriend? You've thrown out the man who gave you papers in this country. You've thrown out the man who helped you to be someone that at least could gain a footing in this country. The little Yoruba boy who is sleeping with you that is your junior. He's 10 years or 15 years. Why don't you go and meet him in this time of course? Now you're doing social distancing. That little um, girl that you're sleeping with that just came in from wherever and you threw away your wife who helped you to have a life. Why don't you go and meet her now? Look, in the end of the story, God is God. No matter how arrogant you feel you are, no matter how you are, you are, it is me, myself, and I. Me, myself, and I. I am number one. And it doesn't matter what I do. It doesn't matter how nasty, how obnoxious, how arrogant, how many lies I tell. It doesn't matter the gossip. Like, you know, someone will go in and you take the man. You have three children for a man. You take him into the gossip arena, gossip bill, and be gossiping about him with people. So like your, your victory will be complete. You have a woman in your life. This woman has been there for you, has sacrificed everything for you, has done everything for you. You take her into the gossip meal so that you can gossip about her and destroy her. When you finish with her, she can't hold her face up in public so that your victory will be complete. Now, where are those people you're gossiping with? Why don't you call them on the phone and continue gossiping and laughing at people and messing things up and doing all kinds of shit? Because nobody, you are a, a queen. Like someone told me to her face, she's a queen. Meaning, it doesn't matter what I do. It doesn't matter what I say. It doesn't matter how I act. It is me. It is me. Sometimes you see spirit. You see demonic spirits in people and you can't say anything. But the impunity had reached a place in which I knew it. That something has to happen. It had become toxic. Where are all of you? That were on the internet blaming men. Men cheat. Men do this. Men do that. Men, the feminists. Where are you guys now? You don't want to remove the mask now and show strong that you show you strong, independent woman that must always attack men. You're always attacking men. One day a girl came and brought that thing to me and I asked her, are you the one who created these men? Why don't you allow the God who created it? It's like you have turned into the God of men. Why don't you allow the God who created them to judge them before you judge them? She said, oh, men are this, men are that. These are women who their fathers were there for them. Their uncles were there for them. They paid school fees for them. They did youth service. They did youth service. They lived from their father's house. They got married and went and destroyed their marriages because of things they, they saw in the internet. Most of them have never read a book on feminism before. Same goes for the men. You're, you are a thing of shame. You must go around chopping women's money. You are a thing of shame. You are, you are, you are trash. You must go around chopping women's money, chopping women's money, going around taking money from women through uh, pretense and pretext. You don't want to work. You don't want to do anything with your life. You just want to go around hurting women, having babies all over the place. The number of... The other day I was watching a show and I was like, isn't this the same thing that has finally happened to Africa? They say, what was the thing that destroyed the black American community in the United States? $22 trillion later. After $22 trillion from the 1970s till now, $22 trillion have been spent on the black community through different presidencies. Why is the black community still the poorest in the United States of America? You know why? One, absence of the fathers in the houses. Two, absence of entrepreneurship among black Americans. No entrepreneurs, no business, no strong businesses. When you want to count strong businesses in the United States, it's all white. From Starbucks all the way to Hobby Lobby. It's all white. And name any serious business in America. Whether is it Burger King, Jack in the Box, you know. Or name it. Is, is it um, even Discount Tire? 
discount tires, serious businesses. It is all white, no black businesses. And, and as there's no black businesses, then what is the other side of it too? The other side of it too is there's lack of father in the house. Women will get up and say, all the men are irresponsible. But a lot of these men were chased out of their houses by women because of the new thing, the new thing that has come from the pit of hell that you must take control. You are the head of the house. Last time I checked, two, any creature with two heads is a monster. But for women, black women, and now the African women went that the African women who lived in beautiful homes, beautiful households, they had a better life than black Americans. They now imitated it just because anything that comes from America must be imitated or London must be imitated or the internet must be imitated. Now it has happened to us now. More women with children without men in the heat than more, millions. They run in the millions. More than 9 million women, African, just going around with babies. No fathers, no nothing. I knew this coronavirus will come when it's time. Everybody can say it's the men who, but there are also women who have done everything they could to destroy the men because guess what? He didn't submit to me. He didn't. So I'm in America. I can, I can create strange doctrines and try to experiment with them. Same with the men. You want, you wanted a woman who can just spend on you. You wanted a woman who can, you can just use as a sex slave. And in the end, you, you had a child with her and you left her with a child. So many, I was watching the society literally go into the ground. I was watching how toxic America had become. I, I see people who are literally afraid of interacting with their fellow Africans because of how toxic the atmosphere is. So many Africans don't want to, and that's another story, Africans who think they are white. They want to, they, if they can turn white and become a Yibo, they would. They even deny that they're from Nigeria or they deny that they're from, there's a Nigerian guy I met with a full strong accent. He told me he's from Portugal. I looked at him, I smiled and passed. Just someone I met at work on one of the floors. I said, hey, how are you? I heard his accent. I said, where are you from? He said, he's from Portugal. Nigerians don't even want to be identified as Nigerians anymore. A lot of people don't want to be identified with their origins and their roots. Why? Because they have become fake. They are no more real. People are no more real. People have become fake. People cannot say to people, sorry, anymore. You do something to someone and you know that what you do deep inside you, you know what, but you must win because you are a queen or you are a king. You don't, you do, there's no fear of God. So this coronavirus, I wasn't surprised when it came. In fact, something kept on ticking in my, every day I wake up, something will tell me something is going to happen. Something has to happen because this is not the America I grew up in. This is not the Africa, Nigeria, the Nigeria I grew up in wasn't like that. The Nigeria I grew up in had peace. I mean, I don't know how to describe the kind of peace. Men and women were not facing each other. People were not insulting each other, quarreling with each other. Women were not saying the kind of things I see people saying, saying that men are broke, broke ass nigger and say. People were very, very, very cordial with each other. But what I have come to see in the world today, what I've come to see how people in jealousy will go in and wreck people's marriages just on purpose. They wreck it because you, what is this new thing of everybody? Like a, what happened in a quiet bomb state? You want to sleep with people's wives. The new thing now is if someone has a wife and his house is stable and everything is fine, you want to go in and sleep with his wife and destroy the marriage and scatter everything. Same with Yoruba people. If you see a man walking with honor, happy and full of joy, holding his wife's hand, you want to go, you want to sleep with that woman. Meanwhile, there are thousands, if not millions of single girls all over the world. It is a sign of the end times. It's a sign of the end times. And any woman who is stupid enough to want to live that life now, I'm sorry for you. It's better right now for any woman. This is my advice for women and even for men. Get married and move on. Leave the world you're seeing now. Because it's even worse things are going to come as judgment on people. That world where you want to go around sleeping with all the divorcees in town, leave that world. You as a man, you want to, I know we hear the stories in Houston, we hear every day, you're a Yoruba guy. You know how to go around sleeping with divorced women. And when you go, you see, here's the part that really kills me about some of these fake, very fake guys, very fake, fake and useless. You go to and say, oh my God, because women will always tell you what happened to them. You say, did he do that to you? Did he do that to you? Did he treat you that way? Oh my God, if I was him, I would be giving you flowers every day. If I was him, I would be, you know, sucking your toes every day, washing your feet and sucking your toes with my tongue. 
If I was, yeah, why don't you go and live with her for just a year and see what happened to the other man? You think it's about sweet man because you want to sleep with her. And then meanwhile, you, you don't even have the decency to leave her children out of it. You want to sleep with her and take control of her children when you've not even gone to court to get married. And start slapping the children around and doing all kinds of things. And taking her money because she doesn't know any better because of the spirit of the times. Why don't you marry her for real and take over those children and pay their bills and pay the house rent and pay everything and live with her for at least two years to know what the other man went through? You think that that is one thing I notice about a lot of these young men who are going around messing up people's marriages, breaking people's marriages, destroying people's households, wanting to sleep with people's wives and all these things. You think that because it's easy now because you live in your house and she lives in her house. So you go and meet her. The love is very hot. Move in and live together. Move in and live together for a year. That's the challenge I have for most of you fake guys out there. You're so fake. Live with her for a year. Then you will know the truth of what happened to the other man. You will encounter what happened to the other man. You think it's about you going, uh, she'll say something. I don't know. This is what, you know, he, he did this. He. And, you, and you say, oh my God, what an animal. Oh Lord. God knows in heaven how I would treat you like a queen. You think it's mouth. Because when you finish talking, you go back to your house. And she goes to her house. And she's too stupid to know that the person that she even left was her real person. That person was there for her and everything. But because she wanted to conquer him and make him submit to her, he had to leave. And now she's sitting in front of you and you say, oh, because you love the way she looks and everything. And you want to sleep with her. You're talking shit. Why don't you move in with her? Same goes for women. You don't even look at, you don't care about your children. Your children now, children know secretly mommy is sleeping with a lesbian. Children know secretly mommy is sleeping around all over the place. You don't even pity your children. You grew up, you didn't see these things. Why do you insist it must, your children must see these things? I swear to God, I'm not surprised that this coronavirus came. I swear to God, the kind of injustice in the world today, the kind of things people are doing to each other. A man quarrels with you in this town, your fellow African, from your fellow area. Instead of you to go to meet the person like a real man. I'm talking to someone. There's someone I'm talking to. And I've heard stories about that thing all over the day. Instead of you to go and meet that person as a real man. And tell him, look what you did to me. Let him explain his own side. Let you guys settle. Let both of you apologize to each other. You pick up the phone and call your pastor in Nigeria. To deal with him. How many of us are calling pastors. So-called pastors in Nigeria to deal with people. You're calling so-called pastors or my, my pastor to deal with people, to destroy people, to de to finish people's lives here in America. And you're here in this same America. Your own will be good and its own will be destroyed. Abi, I wasn't surprised that coronavirus came. And I'm not surprised that lawyers have died. Engineers have died. Doctors have died. Children have died. Adults have died. It does not choose ritual Paul, Smato, Mumuo, it, ha it does not choose anything as far as your economic social strata level is concerned. If you don't walk the correct way, you will die. If you don't act right, you will die. And guess what's doing this? A small virus. But if you listen and put your ears to the ground, scientists cannot explain how a virus that technically stays in us, the coronavirus family is the family of cold, flu, Qatar. Those things come from the family of the coronaviruses. This particular virus, why should it become so potent in a second and be released into the society and do what it does? The scientists go and put it. Nobody can explain. People say it's bats. People say it's not bats. People say it's 5G. People say it's not 5G. That is the radiation. People say, well, guess what? They, they did a test firing of the 5G radiation. And when they did a test firing of the five ra radiation, it created the coronavirus. Well, let me tell you, there are countries who did experimentation on 5G and have been 5G for a long time, like Lesotho. Lesotho in Africa was a pilot program of a country in which it has been 5G for some time. 5G is not, you know, we do not know where this virus, but I can tell you today, I know it is from God. This thing is God showing himself to show human beings that your arrogance your pride your obnoxiousness your lies everything that you think you are is nothing i am humbled in my spirit because god has showed up all oh. if and you see here's the problem 
with this kind of situation when God shows up, both the innocent and the guilty die. And it doesn't matter. God has really showed up. You think it's coincidence that people are dying? No, no, no. You think it's coincidence that Abba Kiari, the chief of staff of Nigeria, is dead? No, it's not coincidence. You think it's coincidence that certain people also in Azurok are still, as we speak, very, very sick? It's not coincidence. There is nothing before the eyes of God that is coincidence. It's because human beings have become obnoxious, fuel of impunity. Lovers, they say, in the last days, men shall become lovers of themselves, obnoxious, boasting, full of impunity, aggressive, evil, and dark. In the last days, this is what the Bible says, and we are now in the last days. Women will become so obnoxious. They can, You know, when you see a person, let me tell you something. One of the demonic things I've seen about women and men in today's world, there is no problem that cannot be solved. It is Oyibo with their demonic, this Oyibo, everything about Oyibo transgender, transgender. Oh, we can't control it. I just feel that I must change my private organs to that of a woman. I can't control it. The urge is so great. It's a lie. It's demonic. Uh, you are a man. You know you are a man. You have muscles, hair, everything. Suddenly, oh, the urge. The urge. I must, I must go and do operation. And you see a man with muscles having a female organ. It is demonic. A woman will leave her husband to go and sleep with another woman outside. And a man will leave his wife to go and sleep with another man outside. People will do all kinds of things. And I'm telling you today, it's demonic. It is demonic. People will do, people will lie. People will lie in court. They lie so that they can destroy their fellow, the person who married them and wish them well. Women will lie in court so that they can destroy women. Women, women will blame men for everything. They cannot take responsibility for anything. Plus, the reason one I see is that as they do, you have to be careful even to point out what they've done that is wrong. You have to be very careful. If you're not careful, what will happen to you, you will see. Same for men. You must be very careful how you point out to a man what he has done that is wrong. There is no more that heart. People's hearts are worse than that of Pharaoh. People's hearts are worse than that of Pharaoh. This thing you know you're about to do is going to destroy someone's life. You will find excuses why you must do it to destroy a person's life. This thing you're about to do is going to render people useless. You must find an excuse why you must do it. You must find an excuse why you must always do the wrong thing. You must do the wrong thing. After all, nobody will know the truth of what you're doing. You are a law unto yourself. You don't answer to anybody. Even God has no right to judge you. Let me let you know, I thank my God that this is a tipping point. I was talking to a friend yesterday and the friend said to me, after this coronavirus is over, you'll see the world will change. People will be nicer. People will be kinder. People will be this. People, I told her, I don't think so. I don't think so. That when I searched my Bible, it was a series of plagues. A series of plagues. They say, In fact, in the Bible, they say that there will come a point where men will look for death and the death will run away from them. There will come a time that men will go and say, mountain, fall on me. And the mountain will not fall on them. They will, that it has, men are so hardened men and women are so hardened that there has to be a breakage of mankind and god is the only one who knows how to do it coronavirus is just the beginning oh coronavirus is just the beginning the recession we're about to enter the global depression will be interesting the kind of things that is going to happen to mankind and i'm using my own community as an example what africans how africans treat their fellow africans what africans say about their fellow africans in private the kind of things africans have done to each other judgment has to come quick not even i'm not even talking about trump level low. i'm not even talking about there's no love you see, the one i know i have a person you see someone's marriage breaking you don't step in and say please i beg you you, women, I you know, let's rush it and destroy it because men, they need to teach a man a lesson. Or he's from Nigeria, they need to teach that Nigerian a lesson. Or they need to teach the Ghanaian a lesson. Or they need to teach that girl from Sierra Leone a lesson. Everything is about where people come from, the tribe. Meanwhile, meanwhile, inside this story, everybody knows that what is happening is not supposed to happen. So that you can keep your obnoxiousness and thrive in it. No, you will not thrive in it. These are the last days. Obnoxious behavior. The thing that you know that what you've done is wrong and that you are the instigator of the destruction of certain things, whether it's the institution of marriage, whether it is friendships, whether it is business deals, whether it is um, whatever it is that, you, that people have done and you've destroyed it and then you stand strong 
Because that is the thing that is raining now. When you destroy it, you don't stand and say, oh boy, honestly, to God who made me, this thing I did wrong. And, I, and I'm sorry for what I did to you. And honestly, here is the truth about it. I pray that God forgives me and I pray you forgive me too. No, human beings, that is weird. That is that na ye ye. That na mugu. That na mumu. Mumu. Nonsense. Rubbish. Now you do it and you twist the story. I don't know what you're talking about. After all, I, I sent that message. And that message was meant for you to understand that there's something wrong with you. You're mentally sick. Everybody is toxic. People are toxic and nasty. America. You came to America. Who oh, this America? Look at America. And America war war. You war war life. And direct America that you that made you, you and because of America you can't listen to what anybody is saying again. Your parents can call you from Nigeria or Ghana or Ivory because you don't listen to anybody. You are you you've, you've turned into something else. This country made you to be. You cannot calm down. You oh oh no your job in your job you see white people white people are greeting you and asking you to so therefore you 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 are off. Look at white people now. They're all wearing masks. White people will walk. These white people that you're worshipping that follow things like Trump. Look at Trump, how he talks. Is this your standard? I would have thought that as an African, for especially us who we are all praying. We all have church everywhere. The streets we come from must have at least eight churches on one street. That our standards will be Jesus Christ. Your standards is just Trump, the way he talks and he behaves, how obnoxious he is. And he must find always, it's always somebody's fault what has happened. Is that your standards? Because a lot of us Africans, when we come here, our standards is Oyibo. And what no, it doesn't matter what, if today you both get up and say when you see a man slap him, a lot of our women will join and slap. If you both get up today and say if everything that is coming from the West is influencing Africa and Africans have no culture, have no culture, have no ground level, men are kissing men. Oh, that is where did it come from? It came from America and it started in Europe and America. Oh, that is the way to go. Coronavirus doesn't surprise me. I am not surprised one bit. I am not surprised about the things because I felt it in me, deep inside my spirit, that something is going, something must give. Some this this number. Look, when I was, I don't know about you, when I was in secondary school, if they told me I would see the number of women who are holding babies without husbands in this generation, this has never happened before in the history of mankind. I would have said it's a lie. The, the number of women who are saying men should come and submit to me. Men should come, come and submit to me. If you don't submit to me, I'll take you to American courts and destroy everything. I would have said it's a lie. That can never happen. Because where I came from, women don't argue with men and men don't argue with me. People just live in harmony. Where I came from, when I look at my parents and that generation, people just lived in harmony. Nobody was, nobody wanted to try power games, even in front of their children. Nobody, nobody was trying to bring strange doctrine. And I lived in a house where my mom did very well, drove a car, wore very nice clothes, had perfume, lived a wonderful life. Where I hear these stories of, they say slaveries, I don't know where it's coming from. I don't know. Obviously, people lived in hell. You know, obviously, some people lived in hell. What I'm trying to say is that this, what I've seen in this generation is horrific. It's horrific. I swear to God. It's horrific. It has nothing to do... <laughs> And that is why coronavirus doesn't, that is really what my video was about. Coronavirus doesn't surprise me. One bit. The meanness, the toxicity, the lack of men having love for their fellow man. Everybody wants to have a gun. Everybody wants to be nasty. Everybody wants to be a boss chick. Every man wants to be a boss man. Nobody, no human, everybody's arrogant, impunity. People, the one that I think is not a problem, have your confidence. Have your self-confidence, have your self-esteem. But the one I am seeing that is everyone now is nobody can say, nobody can admit when they're wrong anymore. Nobody can tell the truth anymore. As long as you come out winning, you are on your way. And the things we value the most, we will discover that we're not taking. Look, in the end of the story, we're taking nothing out of this earth. That is something I'm very, very conscious of. We're taking, there's nothing, where be it car, be it house, be it generator. I don't, there's nothing in the world that will make me to stand up and willfully because of my, of my desire to have things or my desire to get to some place, destroy my fellow man. I will never do it. Rather than that, let me just lose those things. Let it go. But to, because of certain things, I must get up and destroy people and come out the winner. 
and then pick up the phone and be gossiping and destroying that person and coming out. The kind of obnoxious, toxic behavior. I am not surprised that coronavirus finally came. I'm not surprised. And I'm not surprised that something that we can bear, that we cannot even see with our eyes has brought people to their knees, has brought people, has made people cry on, on the internet. Doctors crying, nurses crying, engineers crying. The only problem is, do we know that it's from God? And are we ready to accept that there is a God? Are we ready to humble ourselves before God? That is a question I would rather ask, including me. Including me, because as I'm sitting here, have I made mistakes? Absolutely. But at least there was one thing I had in me. If I hurt someone, I wouldn't feel happy. It would disturb my spirit. It would disturb me and disturb me and disturb me and disturb me. Even if I didn't go back and say sorry to that person, I wouldn't feel... The fact that people can really harm people nowadays, either in the American courts or either by gossip or either by acts or either by behavior and sleep peacefully in the night is very alarming. Very toxic behavior in the African community and everywhere else. It's alarming that you can sleep peacefully in the night after you screw people up. That is the thing that I don't get. Me, I cannot sleep in the night though. I will be awake thinking, even I will kneel down and start crying to God, God, please forgive me. Forgive me for what I've done to this person. Do you know that there's been times in my life where I woke up and remembered what I did to someone in the past. I kneeled down and prayed. And then I started trying to find that person only to hear that that person is dead. I couldn't even make up with that person. The thing has happened to me more than six times now. Like I will wake up one day or something will happen that will remind me of that scenario. And I'll be like, oh God, oh God. And then I will start praying. I will be telling God, God, please, if I can meet this person to make it right. A lot of us, no, well, okay. As long as we dealt with him and showed him, say, I show and say I be queen, or I show and say I be king, or I show and say I be I'm from Ghana, or I show and say I did from Ivory Coast, or I show and say I come from Nigeria. We are fine with ourselves. And I'm telling you, this is just the tip of the iceberg. God will bring every person who has no respect for God to his knees. In this season, people will come down to their knees. Trust me. People will wake, will wake up one day and the things they held valuable, like money, possessions or so, will not mean a thing anymore when this is said and done. Mark my words. And I want to thank you for watching this video. And I want you to know that in the end of the story, if you have not made your heart right with God because you think you are modern, or like someone told me the other day, uh, I'm an atheist because he came and saw white people. Or I'm a realist. I'm a realist because he came and saw white people saying that. Meanwhile, they come from backgrounds where they, they, they with heavy prayer backgrounds, heavy Christian backgrounds, but their heart is hardened like a rock. Those kind of people in this season, they wake up and God will show them that what they hold dear is trash. It's trash. The only thing you can leave behind as a human being is, and that is my aim in this life, that every person I've met, I will be of good example and that I will leave a good impression and that if I've offended you, I'll have the fortitude and the power and the strength and the courage, which is real strength and courage to come and tell them I am sorry for what I've done. And that before I go, before I go out of this earth, that too many people that maybe maybe only one person I missed because of distance or because they were living in another planet, was the person I couldn't go back to say sorry to. Any man who thinks I've offended you, please let me know. I promise you, I'll come and apologize. And I promise you, I will make it right for any man. Because in this world, the only thing we leave behind is memories. And you know what? The other day I sat down, I was lying on my bed thinking, who was my great, great, great grandfather? I don't know. A few years from now, none of us will be remembered. None of us. The few who've been able to do things and have their names in books will be remembered. But most of us, for all the obnoxious things we're doing and all the evil we're doing, we will never be remembered. The few who did good will be remembered. That is this earth. Their names are in books. Their names are remembered by generations. People remember, they say, this is our family. It was some great-grandfather we had that started having this money. So those ones. But those who are living the Ameri America... I'm in America, so I can talk to people. I treat people. They, they will have, they will be forgotten. They're like, they're like dust that the wind blows away. They will never be remembered. I don't remember who my great-great-grandfather was. Was he a good man? Was he a bad man? I don't know. But I know one thing for sure. 
that he's gone. He's gone. The only thing we leave behind is our memories of people, how they remember us, how they see us. And there are people who I don't care. I don't care. Some people are like wrecking cars. They drive and they create accidents all over the place and keep like hit and run drivers. They go around hurting people, pouring toxicity wherever they go, hit and run everywhere they go. They do all kinds of things because in their mind, God no D. There is no God. Only them they. It's just them and them, me, myself, and I. In the end of the story, me, myself, and I will become a thing of the past very soon because this season we're going into will bring people to their knees. Coronavirus is from God. Nobody can explain it. Nobody can. It, yes, China can maneuver. Bill Gates can maneuver. Africa can maneuver. America will maneuver. Trump will talk crap. People will do whatever they can. But this thing, it's God. He has the whole world in his hands. He's the one who knows why he allowed this to come upon men. And I can tell you right now that if we were all good to each other, if we all loved each other and treated each other fairly, this thing wouldn't come upon mankind. It's because men have been evil to each other. And I use my own community as an example. The African community, people have been very, very wicked towards each other in the African community. Let's face it as it is. What people say about people, what people have gossip that is not true, Gossip that is not even, or that cannot be authenticated. G gossip that is so, lies that have been told and told and told and told till someone's in image is destroyed. And then you yourself, you're also struggling in the same society. It's not like you, the government is paying your bills. It's not like the government is buying your clothes. You still have to wake up at eight and go to work and come back, back like any other person at five. So what makes you think you're better than the other person? Coronavirus also shows right now that there's, nobody's better than any other person. I am telling you today that this is from God and it's the tip of the iceberg. And if I were you, like I have made up in my mind, make sure you live right with your fellow human being because you never know. You never know how it may turn out. You never know. A lot of people, the way they're living now, they cannot stand. Well, if anything happens to them, they're in bad shape because they have hurt. So they are just toxic. They, have, they are nasty, obnoxious, arrogant, impunity. They are no more human beings. And then, you see, I believe in being constant. If I see a Yibo, I smile. I'm nice to Yibo, but when I'm with my Africans, I insult them and treat them bad. If I'm with my Ghanaians, I, there are those I smile with and there are those I treat badly. There are those I act like I'm better than them and they're, they're, they're like beneath me and there are those that I react. No. Be constant across the board. Treat all men with respect. Treat all men with dignity. Cheap, treat all men with integrity and love your fellow man. And if someone offends you, come out openly and tell them and make it up with them and move on. Because this life, this short life that we're living, not so many years ago, I was a kid running around. Now I'm a grown up. And in this short life, the way I've seen how men treat men, it, it, I'm not surprised that this has come. But again, will people even be able to admit it? People won't admit it. Pastors, pastors so-called men of God, what they've done to women, what they've done to men, what they've done to people's marriages. You want to control human beings. You want to control people so that they can keep on bringing you money, control people and be a lord over them. You better you better face your God who sent you into this thing and live and, and just, if you know you can, you see, one thing about me is if I know you cannot improve my life, then I have no business being around you. That African thing whereby the, you must just submit to it. You must just submit to authority. Meanwhile, the authority is not helping your life. Meanwhile, the authority is not doing it. It's just, it's just slavery part four. Because our first slavery came with us. Historically, African countries have been fighting against themselves before the British came. If you can, if this village feed, defeat this village, they carry them as slaves, kill some of them and put in the shrine. Then the British came and enslaved us. And then after the British came and enslaved us and left, the World Bank came and enslaved us and made Africa the poorest continent in the world. The World Bank came, enslaved us, enslaved all over the place. And now the fourth stage is China has come to enslave us too. And we're all falling into that enslavery situation, plus the slavery of our minds by Western civilization. It's okay for men to sleep with men. It's okay for women to sleep with women. It's okay for you to destroy your marriage and throw it into the dustbin. And take go to court and, and make sure the man never recovers financially when you finish with him in court. Or do that to the woman. Go and do spousal support. Take all her money from her. All these things we're doing are not of God.
is not in the Bible. That is not the way they said we should do to get to heaven. So, but anyway, who am I to even talk about this? That's what people will say. It's not like you are Deboye or you are the head of Winner's Chapel or you're the head of Redeemed Christian Church of God or you're this or you're that. Who are you to even talk? Who are you to even be this? So therefore, whoever you think you're better than, you keep it going. You're better than you. you I, I can never bring myself down to talk to that person. Continue. Continue because you're the one who created that person. Abby, I'm too, I'm too much. I'm too, I'm too much to even interact with this. Hmm? Even the person who helped you to stand, you're too much now. You cannot act with trash because you've you've succeeded in you've succeeded in at least having a little bit of stability in life. Coronavirus, I'm not surprised. It's not surprising to me. When it's time, more things will come. I wish it wouldn't be so. But this is the season that men will be brought to their knees. I've seen doctors crying, engineers, nurses crying, people scared for their lives, people praying in church. Then sometimes I went to the other day, I went to church, I stood there, listened to people praying. It was desperate. People are praying in desperation. Desperate. But I am telling you now, it will be something that when in the future people will look at it and say, Wow. Thank you for listening to my video. Coronavirus, to me, is not a coincidence. Thank you.